Hey, good morning, people. It's uh, Mark chapter 15 today, and we're at that uh, critical time in the journey towards the cross that Jesus took, where Jesus had uh, been condemned to death, Barabbas had been released. And then from verse 16 through to verse 20, we read about the great injustice of the Roman soldiers. You know what injustice is? Injustice is just an abuse of power. And here these Roman soldiers had uh, been given power, supposed power over Jesus. And they, they beat him and they hit him with a stick. They put a purple robe on him and they, they called him names and they spat upon him. That's a great abuse of power where the innocent pick up so much of the flack and the guilt and the pain and the suffering uh, as a result of somebody who has not a clue what he's doing, but chooses to exhibit a great issue of injustice on that person. But then when Jesus had been mocked and beaten and was bleeding and was pretty much half dead, they put a cross upon his shoulders and they marched him up the hill toward Calvary. And he walked through the town and at a certain time he was particularly weak. And then from verse 21, this is what we read, pick up the beauty of this story. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it, and they crucified him. Think about that for a moment. Here's a guy, Simon, doesn't even come from that country, not a Jewish person, he's a complete alien to the nation of, of Israel. And they apparently forced him to carry Jesus' cross. I wonder if he realized what he was doing. I wonder what he realized he was when he realized that he had been carrying the cross of the Son of God. Apparently he did become a believer. His son Rufus, who's mentioned there, is mentioned later on in the scripture, putting two and two together, it could have been the same guy. So there's beauty in the story, and the story follows out that many people came to know Jesus, probably simply because they did an act of kindness. But the beauty here of what Rufus did is, is in a maybe a philosophical sense. He got under the burden of Jesus. He helped Jesus to carry his burden. And you know what, people? We get to do the same thing today, do we not? We don't have to carry a physical cross of Jesus. He's already done that 2,000 odd years ago. But now we get under the burden of Jesus for the cause for which Jesus came. You know Jesus came because he loved the world. Jesus came to die upon the cross. He came to serve humanity. He came because he loved them. And when we get under the burden of God, don't we do the same thing? We get under the burden of God for a dying and, and pretty much almost dead humanity. And we carry the same cross that Jesus, although ours is not made of wood. But when we get under the burden of Jesus, we get under the burden of prayer for humanity. We get under the burden of Jesus when we, when we help people, when we assign ourselves tasks and we we work alongside people to do what Jesus would do if Jesus were physically here. Wouldn't it be a beautiful thing to look at our lives and say, what am I doing to get under the burden of Jesus for mankind? What am I doing? I don't carry a physical cross anymore. I carry my own cross. We'll talk about that another time. But we get under the burden of Jesus for humanity when we really pray for those around us when we share the gospel with those in our country and in our town and around the world, because that's what the burden of Jesus looks like right now. Jesus invites you to get under his burden. They had to force Simon to get under it, but Jesus offers you an opportunity to get under the burden of Jesus for a dying world. Don't just walk happy through this world thinking it's all about you. People, it's not about you, for goodness sake. You're on this planet to serve the kingdom of God and to get under the burden of Jesus for a dying world. Hope you think about that. Hope you live that out in your life. Hope you, you talk to your kids about the burden of Jesus and his love for the world and that we will do this together with Jesus and make Jesus smile because we share his burden the same way that he did. Think about that today and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.